All right, welcome members. July 10th, it is uh, the weekly broadcast. Take a look at what happened. And, uh, you know, as we all know, the market had a nice big follow through on the prior week's strength. We'd kind of talked about this might be the setup, you know, and as we went through the week, it became more and more clear the setup was there and that uh, we probably should be focused on it. NASDAQ, the only one under break even on the year, 35 to 4% uh, elsewhere. So, uh, market keeps climbing higher. Fortunately, we've been positioned pretty well uh, into this, and we'll talk about that as we go along here. Uh, big thing last week, 23, 2103, right? We got over uh, that big uh, resistance area that we've talked about for ad nauseum, and uh, to me, that was the largest thing that happened. You know, I pointed out last week that we, could, you know, the best thing that could happen to this market would be some sort of a small pullback and then you get a push forward and that's exactly the way this thing played out right you had this the big spike back up after the brexit right small pullback right right in that area that we identified as the this is the first place you would expect the buyers to come in they do they take it back up they get right nested in that 2100 area again and friday on the employment number they break it out didn't have any huge escalation in volume uh, that's kind of a you know a, a so-so thing. It that doesn't help, but it doesn't really hurt. But the key thing is, we're over 2103. I mean, this has been critical resistance for ages, right? It, it's it's been this way each and every time that we've come up here. If you go back here, there, again, all of these attempts here, and now you get the breakout. When you when you hit something enough right there's going to be some amount of supply at that level you don't know what that supply is you just know it's there and what you do is you look at how it tested each time and how it consolidates under it for example here the consolidated it consolidated under it but it never could get the push on any kind of volume back into it right and then you got the big sell off at the beginning of the year now you get the same thing. You can't get over it. Here they're trying to take it down, do the same thing they did here and break it down, get a push back up and break it down. Instead, we got that little setup on the daily that we talked about, and now you get the break over it. Now the key, of course, is to hold it and to try to build on it. And that's, that's going to be the focus in the coming days and weeks. Um, the thing is, you know, we anticipated, well, let me, let me say it a different way. In, in neoclassical, we're trying to to anticipate to some degree, but we're really trying to understand where supply and demand is and how we're setting up in those areas and how we're attacking those places that we know supply exists and demand exists. And so when we, we you know look at this, you know one could say, hey, we should have anticipated this a few months back. In other words, when we came off the lows in, in February, right? We should have known this was going to happen. That's nonsense, right? I mean, you're not going to know that in July you're going to break out. I mean, you, you can know that the setup potentially might be there, but it's got to play out. I mean, you, you can't take a position in, in, in February and then ride it up and down on the hopes that that's going to happen. I just don't think that's a viable way to trade the markets. You know, others might have said that, hey, you can't even trust this now. And that may be true, right? It may fail still. We don't know that. What we do know is we got over a critical area and now we're going to see if it can hold it. So, you know, to say that you shouldn't get long, and, and as you know, if you look at the portfolios, we are long and have been long, but we're long in other places as well that's played out, right? You trade elsewhere, you trade where things show you to trade. So our focus on gold, on gold stocks, even on a few longs that we've continued to hold, they continued to show well. There was no reason to abandon them, right? And we made our money elsewhere until the general market started to break out now. And if it does continue, we'll make money on that as well now that we have that set up. So, you know, I, I, I know you can second guess this stuff. I know you can, you know, you, you, you can work all angles and you can come up with all kinds of conclusions. But in the end, it's really about supply and demand and trying to take those setups that have the highest probability of success. And that's always the case. That's what you have to do. And sometimes you'll work for months before you get a good move. 
usually money comes in bunches and it leaves in bunches you want to avoid losing it in bunches and make it when it comes on the indexes over the 2103 uh, to me that's the key level now it's got to hold it right it's multiple frame breakout multiple swing points and so if we look at it again here on the daily right you're breaking two swing points uh, here's the monthly where right at the top I was going to show you that but let me go back to the daily first on the daily and on the weekly here's the breakout on the weekly you break this swing point high you also break that one there's only one left or actually two left above now and we're right at those and if you go on the daily let's go to the daily here actually where is my daily I thought I pulled it up there it is on the daily you broke two as well so if, if you if you trust in the numbers this should carry you got an ABCG structure to boot that projects much higher actually about another 50 points on the daily and just about the same on the weekly about 60 I think on the weekly and so you have the ABCD structure in place you have the breakouts over multiple time frames multiple swing points that's that's as good as it gets folks you have to try and buy any weakness any kind of retest into these two swing point highs if it comes this week and take a shot at it that's the best trade setup that's out there um, so will it work well we've seen enough failures right I mean this this year we've seen a lot of failures on these multiple swing point breakouts but over time it's just like you know in Vegas right you're gonna bet on the case that you have the highest probability anything where you're dealing with probabilities you're gonna bet on those things that have the highest probability there may be a streak where they fell and this year has been that way but that doesn't change the fact that over the long run they play out 90 percent of the time and so you know if if you're if you're believing in the probabilities and I've built this system I've done the research and I know the numbers you have to keep believing in it and you have to keep trading those even if there's a stretch where they don't work breakouts multiple time frames large ABCD structures about 50 points higher now on the daily and the weekly NASDAQ NDX they did the same thing they got over that same area uh, so the NASDAQ you can see it here on the daily it got over this one it's on the ABCD structure on the way up so A to B C to D right that one projects higher on the weekly though it hasn't broken above these areas now these are not swing points the key area here is this prior uh, breakdown bar 4926 it's over it at 4956 the next one that it's going to target is up here at 5092 and so ABCD structures on the daily projects it up into that area easily up into these swing point highs actually that would push the S&P up to its levels and would also allow the NDX to do the same thing and you can see that here on the NDX you got the breakout here the ABCD structure and again the projections into these higher numbers and finally if we go over the Russell the Russell also the ABCD structure on the way up breaks out on the swing point high here and it too has to get higher and the projection on the Russell is into this area here and here so everything's working looks like this market finally has gotten over that key area that's going to allow it to move higher how should it do it it actually should should just hold up here for a week or so and then take off or just continue either one works just don't fall back below the 2103 number uh, on a closing basis on the weekly uh, so no follow through on the earnings right earnings this week is the big thing and then uh, potentially you know what could go wrong right the other thing is world equities I mean we could have some crisis situation develop that takes all this off the table and so those are the two things we have to be concerned with uh, but the setups there and as I said uh, both Wednesday and again Thursday morning and made the trades on Thursday the setup was there you had to take the chance on it and uh, position yourself forward is this the beginning of a multi-year run higher that's very doubtful in my mind can we get up above on that S&P right can we get back up above that 21 50 uh, what is it 2134 yeah can we stretch it a little bit higher yes we can is it the is it just going to you know continue higher I don't think that's the case you know if it gets up there and it really does start the leg higher then we'll have to reconsider it but right now I still would argue that that's not 
what we're heading towards. You know, what does it mean for stocks, bonds, and gold to all rally together? I've pointed this out a couple times now this uh, past couple of weeks where we've seen all asset classes move, and typically that's the result of, or has been the result of, some sort of easing worldwide in terms of the central banks in terms of debt, right? So that you can put on more debt and that pushes all debt instruments higher. And so my good friend Charles Kirk, you know, he offered this study and you can pop in here and take a look at it that shows that, you know, typically when they all are doing this, you'll get a little pullback on the equities, but gold just goes higher, bonds go higher, and equities over time go higher as well. And now the problem with that study when I looked at it is it looked like it was from 1980 forward. I think this is more like a 1970s repeat. So I don't know that all three of these are going to continue higher. But in the short run, you know, the, for a few weeks, yeah, I think they can do that. Bonds, precious metals, uh, much more of a sure bet in my mind uh, than the equities at this point. So I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't lessen my exposure to those groups. Matter of fact, I would use weakness to try to add to them. The key is central bankers, right? This week, ECB, Canadian banks, going to weigh in. I would expect that on the pound, you're probably going to see some sort of a buy, uh, buy the news on the pound. In other words, the pound's been depreciating; it's been pushing the pound lower. I expect that we're going to see that kind of culminate this week, and then we're going to get a push back up as a result of uh, what's been happening here. So, you know, if I were trying to do a short-term bet that might be a short-term setup if it fires on the on the EC uh, not the ECB I actually got that wrong it's not ECB it's the the Bank of England BOE uh, Fed speak every day this week economics is going to be big this week because you got earnings and you got the Fed and so you're gonna have Fed speakers every day they're gonna be out there in force do they start getting you know do they start leaning back the other way and say that we're going to have to raise rates and we're going to have to do it right away? If we do see that, then is the market going to believe it? That's the next question. So that's what we should be focused on there. And on earnings is can they hold this week and actually get the push either this week or next? So are we going to see earnings push higher or not? I've, I've got my earnings list already for um, July. You can pop in there and you can see what's coming up. Most of the earnings are, are small, um, large banks this week. There's a few outside of that. You might want to look at those. The largest ramifications of Brexit has been, right, that the sentiment now is that central bankers are going to have to ease around the world. More QE in some places, in particular in Britain, uh, but also pot potentially in Japan and the ECB again in another month or so. And, and there's even people saying here in the U.S. I don't know that that's the case, but... In the past, that's, you know, as I've said last week, that's sent equities, bonds, and gold higher. And I, I suspect that, uh, you know, as long as the belief is this is going to happen, money's going to keep flowing into those areas. And if we see those areas uh, uh, push higher, right, and we see that follow through from the central bankers, they'll go even higher. So, so far, that seems to be what's happening. And uh, if we keep going here, sector view, you know, last week, uh, you know, the most sectors, not only did they hold up, you know, I was talking about about five sectors to watch. Most of them held up, and most of them now have gotten over their B points on ABCD structures. These are the strongest ones with the best setups right now, and there's almost all of them. And if you go to the secondary sectors, here's the group there that's the strongest. Some of these have better risk rewards. If you haven't done this in the past, you can take any of these, you know, like uh, take the SLX, and then pop over and take a look at the uh, uh, sector view. So you just come into the TA Today site, you know, go down to the tools, sector view, and sector trends here. Pop that up, take this particular stock, and then push it in there. And the sector trends, just come in here, enter it in. So I'll just enter, uh, oops, got the wrong thing. Let's put the SLX in there. So that ETF, and the reason we're doing this is we're saying, okay, what is in this sector, right? And what it's going to give you is it's going to give you things that are in this sector. This sector happens to be in the XLB. It's a still sector. You can go down. You can see the stocks in it. And you can actually click on these highlighted. I usually do the intermediate term, right, because I'm more interested in that. And I see where the bullish ones are. And I see if they're bullish on the intermediate and sideways or bullish here. And if they are, 
then I pop over like AKS for example and I see what that stock looks like and you can do this on all of them and see how they're setting up and AKS if I look at it actually it's not a bad setup this is a pretty good looking setup so the very first one gives you some idea of some potential trades that are out there in those sectors that are strong and that's how I would use that uh, to make trading decisions uh, bottom line you know not only did we hold we broke over that 2103 I think that's the most critical thing that happened last week and we also didn't see any kind of sign of trend participation weakness so when I look at trends the trends are still as strong right they're still out there still strong no real weakness coming in so in other words breath if you think about it from a neoclassical point of view is still there and still looking good the scenarios for the coming week last week you know it was even stronger than I expected that's two weeks in a row best case this week is it just surges over the highs and goes off to complete that ABCD structure so in other words 50 points S&P straight up worst case it breaks back down number 2103 and it does it you know in, in kind of convincing fashion that would be the worst case I don't think those are either one of those are the more likely case more likely cases some backing and filling that but you're over the 2103 and that it holds though on a weekly basis and sets up that potential to trade higher best shorter term trade uh, staying away from stocks that are about to announce just don't mess with those but go back and look at the other earnings that I've already got out there, you know, the 2016, 06, and now 07 earnings. Look at those stocks that are on that list and look at examples. You know, these are examples of stocks. Look at those and find ways to get into those on any kind of retraces or breakouts that look to make sense, right? So use your neoclassical tells in these areas that have already reported. The best longer term trade investment, last week I talked about the, uh, uh, the British, uh, uh, the, the, I'm trying to say the British market, the FTSE, and, and that ETF that we looked at there. Uh, I think probably the best one right now is probably the indexes and the sectors that are all breaking out doing ABCD structures. If you catch any kind of weakness there, you can put your stops under the B points or slightly under the B points and shoot for the completions of those. So that's the way it looks this week. Although I would have preferred that 2103 hold that we actually break back down one more time. That's not what happened, right? And, you know, we're not here to tell the market what to do. We're here to follow what the market wants to do and to make money off of what it does. And so, you know, keep your mind open stay with the supply and demand right and figure out where the setups are and use them uh, to make the trades with the highest probability that's it for this week uh, i'll see you next time thanks bye